Hey everybody, check out this evening on the Oregon coast. Absolutely beautiful. Well, the crabbing was so good a couple of weeks ago. I rounded up a couple of buddies and we're out here to do another night sesh. Things are shaping up to be really gorgeous out here tonight. And I got a good feeling these crab are gonna be on the chew and we just might have the time of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> grab that guy. <laughs> They're ridiculous. Alright. Get my hanging bait going on that one. Get it in the water. Because the seagulls aren't going to leave it alone. Oh. That is... This pot is pretty beat up. Glad they don't catch crab. Check the doors. Doors. Looks good. Yeah, I have something to keep busy out here, like having some beers, or maybe listen to your favorite podcast, like the Plum Forest Podcast, which you can find wherever podcasts are found. <laughs> That's a keeper in the corner. Nice big boy. Nice big boy there. Yeah, that's a solid, maybe maybe two, maybe three. Big, big boy. Oh wow, look at that one. That's, that's a gorgeous one. Also, that guy right there. Yeah, that's a nice one too. And maybe that guy. Nice that's job. Right. Keeper in the corner. That is a keeper out there maybe. That's what, that's a keeper. That's a nice Not full, but got some nice ones. That's a keeper right there. No question about it. That is also a keeper right there. Good job. Good job, son. Well, here's a couple of tiny crab, but you can totally tell the difference between the sexes. That one there is a boy, and that one there is a girl. So, both far too small, so they're going to have to go back. See you later, buddies. Do it. Night crabbing. Hi. Right. We'll check that one. Oh wait. Yeah. Nah, that's what it looks like. Oh, you lucked out this time, Junior. That looks like one good one. Two good ones, maybe. Lots of little ones. We got a lot of pitching to do on this one. So that is a big boy. That's a big, big boy right there. You got your one in there for sure. Hey. And they're real close. If I can hook the gauge on there and it stays put, I know they're good. There we go. There we go. There we go. See? That 
was another great trip with great friends, and we managed to pull 13 keeper crab last night, which is not too shabby for a dock that's that heavily used. So I got the crab home and steamed them up, and I'll put a link at the end of this video on how to steam crab. And I've been here shelling crab for some time, but now I've got this beautiful crabby slabby. It's a crab and artichoke dip inspired pizza that everyone's going to love. So let me show you how to make it. You can absolutely use a tomato sauce with this recipe, but since I'm kind of mimicking that crab and artichoke dip flavor, I'm going to whip up a quick white sauce to go with this one. So I've got two tablespoons of flour, and two tablespoons of butter, a cup and a quarter of whole milk, and I'm going to flavor that with a half a cup of grated Parmesan. And yes, that is the cheap stuff, but you use whatever Parmesan fits your budget. And I've got a couple of cloves of minced garlic. This sauce will come together pretty quick. We're going to do this over kind of medium heat. We'll start by melting that butter. Now, before that gets too hot and too brown, I'll put in the garlic just to get it kind of warming up. We're releasing some good flavor. And now I'm going to cook that flour a little bit. Mm, and now I can really smell that garlic, kind of a roasty flavor from that flour. So I'm ready to go in with my cold milk. And I'll just pour all of that right in there. And then whisk this down so I don't get a bunch of lumps. Give that a good pinch of salt. Hit that with a little bit of black pepper. Once I'm sure there's no lumps or anything in there, I'll go ahead and go in with that cheese. And we'll just keep stirring this until it comes up to a little boil and all that cheese has melted. There we go, starting to thicken up real nice now. But I won't know fully how thick that's gonna be until it boils and all the cheese is melted. That looks pretty good now. It's all hot. Boiling a little, so I'm going to kill the heat and just keep stirring this. Make sure everything's melted. Looks good. That is nice now. I got to let this cool down so it's not too hot when I put it on the dough there. So we'll let that cool for a few minutes. Then we can put our pizza together. Dough, 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 it's magic. Now, this is a dough that I made myself. A lot of times I'll just buy the dough at a grocery store or a local bakery, but what is really important is to let that thing age. Make this stuff ahead of time and then put it in the refrigerator and it's gonna be even better after a day, better after two days, better after three days, and even out up to a week. And what that's gonna do is get some fermentation happening in there, which is gonna help this thing develop a really nice flavor and also some kind of gassiness so you get some real nice air bubbles in your dough. Another thing that is very, very important with pizza dough is to take that out of the refrigerator and then let that thing warm up for, I give it at least two hours to get that thing all the way up to room temperature and it'll fully double in size. But what's really gonna happen is it's gonna fight you a lot less when you go to stretch that out or roll that out. So age your dough and then bring it all the way up to temp before you work with it and you're gonna have a great result. I'm just about ready to get going here and I could pop this in the oven but I really like to do these on the grill so I've got my grill preheating already because I want to get that thing as hot as I can get it before I pop it in there and for putting these on the grill I like to use this tool here that I got from my mother-in-law many years ago shout out to mother-in-laws they do get a bad rap but some of them are pretty good and this just makes it really nice and easy to get that pizza on and off the grill without sticking at all and I don't need to pre-cook the dough so it's just a very handy tool to have. Oh, I'm going to work with a floured surface. Now I'll get my 
nice and warm dough out onto there. And my finger's floury. First thing I'm gonna do is just kind of push that down a little bit. Now I can just continue to spread this and poke this down like this, or I can take the rolling pin to it. It's just so nice and easy to work when this dough comes up to temp. It really doesn't matter. Looks good. Now just fold that over. Get that about centered. Flop it, I can pull it around. Get it inside the rim a little bit. Now, the sauce can kind of get clumpy on you if it gets too cold and makes it hard to spread. If that happens, just get a little bit of heat back into there and it'll be nice and smooth again. Okay. Now there. Got my sauce just barely warm now, so it's nice and spreadable again. And we'll start with that sauce. Get a nice layer of that. Not too thick, not too thin, but of course, that's totally up to you. Right out there to the edges. And now, the main flavors in a crab and artichoke dip are going to be some green onion, of course, those artichoke hearts, and the beautiful, beautiful crab that we just got. So I'm going to actually start by putting these green onions down right onto the sauce. Then I'm going to hit that with some nice mozzarella some provolone would be great here any kind of blend that you like there you go now we'll hit that with those artichoke hearts these ones are marinated but the plain canned ones will work really good too actually you can hardly tell the difference And then, the highlight of this dish, or any dish I can think of, that fresh jumbo lumps of Dungeness crab. Oh man, one of my favorite things to eat in the world. All right, let's get this out to the grill. <laughs> Now that is just about as high as I can get this grill to go and the way I like to cook these is to start them over direct heat and then turn off the heat that's directly under the pizza and let the ambient temp inside of the grill finish cooking that so for preheating everything's cranked all the way up of course now I'll pop the pizza in and then I'll turn the burner that's right below it down to low let that go for four minutes or so to crisp up the bottom then I'll turn that one entirely off and then just let the, the heat from the other two burners finish baking this thing. So that'll take probably another nine minutes, but you'll have to fiddle around with your own setup till you get this dialed in, but it is worth it. Now, close it down, turn that one down all the way to low, and then after four minutes, I'll turn off that center burner. We'll let the outside two burners finish this off for about another nine minutes. Smells great. Let's take a look at what we got here. Nice, we got a nice, nice crust there. Little bits of char. <laughs> Let's see how that tastes. <laughs> oh my! Oh! <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> Step aside, Wolfgang Puck, because that is one delicious pizza. I mean, if you like crab and artichoke dip, you already know that the flavors of the onion and the artichoke and that crab just work perfectly together. And that sauce is a great replacement for the sour cream and mayonnaise base in the dip. But you combine that with a warm and crispy and a little bit chewy crust and it's awesome. <laughs> of course, Dungeness crab fresh out of the ocean is the star here. But, in a pinch, if you want to use some imitation crab here, you're going to do just fine. <laughs> Fantastic! Well, I hope you and your family and friends can get out there and catch a whole bunch of crab of your own. And if you do, give this a try. I know you're going to love it. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs> totally.